okay enough of synthetic data set now let us consider a real world data set that that is displayed on the right so this data set is uh, belongs to a breast cancer classification so you can take a look into this data set quickly so here is an id of a patient and the diagnosis whether the tumor is malignant that is cancerous or non malignant that is sorry that is benign non cancerous okay so and there are some future values radius mean texture mean all these things so around some 30 futures and around some 500 plus samples okay so how do we relate this to the notations so we would like to know uh, i would like to relate this to various notations used in general machine learning settings so uh, x denotes a vector or a single instance or a single sample or a data point see various names and let us speak with a data point so x is a data point or it's a vector so in this case whether a row is a vector or a column is a vector okay so we have so many columns here right so i can actually move around you can see that i have so many columns in fact uh, exactly to still there are 32 columns including the first two and number of rows you can if you scroll it down you can see there are so many rows around some 500 plus number of rows so if i say x is a vector so in this case or x is a data point whether we are considering x as a whether all the rows represent i mean each row in the data set represents x or each column in the data set represents x okay so uh, think about it okay let me reveal it so if you look at the headers radius mean texture mean perimeter mean area mean all of them are futures okay so it, it describes uh, the shape of the tumor with some numbers okay so we call it as a future so since this is a future and we call this as a future column and all the sample must contain the description of the all the features then column is not going to represent x it is only the row okay so let me display a few more notations here okay so j is the future since we have 30 such features j runs from 1 to 30 remember x is a vector it contains n uh, number of elements and in this case it is going to contain 30 elements okay the first element denotes the first future so in this case it denotes first future that is radius mean and i okay i denotes the sample number or the uh, i sample okay so say for example if we say i is equal to three then i am actually talking about the moment i fix i is equal to three then we are actually talking about the third row all columns okay so we are actually considering about this particular patient with all 30 features okay so i can run from 1 to 569 so why it is up to 569 because i have a total of 569 samples okay so the number of samples in this data set is 569 if I write something like this, x of uh, 28 of 128. So what is the meaning? So this says the 128 sample, okay, in this case, 128 patient, 28 future, okay? So we are talking about 28 future of 128 sample, okay? So uh, this is very straightforward. So you try to uh, understand this, okay? And of course, the uh, n is equal to 569. So x3 denotes, so what is x3? If we just write 3 without any suffix, it means I'm talking about all the futures of the third sample, okay? Not the particular future of the third sample. And if I write x3 or something like this, x30 of 3, then we are talking about 30th future of third sample, okay? Again, especially this sample. And you can see that we have a column named diagnosis. 
uh, which says whether the tumor is malignant or benign. So if it is malignant, we replace this by, we denote this by one. If it is benign, we denote this by zero because we have, we can only feed numbers to the machine learning algorithms, okay? So if we follow this convention, then Y3 is actually the label for the sample, third sample, okay? So which is one. So Y3 is going to be one, or you can write this as Y3 is M, but you replace it by the value one, okay? So now we have understood, right? So the futures are vectors containing uh, 30 elements for this data set. And how many such vectors are there in the entire data set? There are 569 vectors, okay? Or 569 samples. So uh, we need to, uh, once if we uh, contain the samples, then the next step is to pass all these samples to the machine learning model. And then for each sample, it will make some prediction. So we denote this by yi caps equal to f of xi. So you can see that, right? So uh, say again, if we pass x3, which is f of x3, and if the algorithm f of x3, if my machine learning, machine learning model produce the value as zero, Okay, saying that this particular sample belongs to benign, that is non-cancerous. But what is the ground truth? Okay, so my, the, my prediction is it is benign. Okay, but if I look into the ground truth for the third sample, okay, so here is a third sample, it says it is a malignant. Okay, so it's actually, it should be one. So that is a loss. So I will count this as one. The reason is my prediction, which is zero, is not equal to the ground truth. So whenever it is not equal to my ground truth or the corresponding label, then I will set the value to one, okay? So you think about when the loss value becomes zero, under which condition, okay? And the next obvious question is which function is suitable? You can use a linear function or nonlinear function, whatever. But uh, for the sake of uh, illustration, okay, instead of considering all the 30 futures, we are going, suppose if you consider only the first few futures, 17, 17, say for example, this is X1, and I'm considering the first few futures, that is X1 of one is 17.99 and 10.38, okay? So like that for all the samples, and if we consider the first two futures, we can see whether a linear function is suitable or not because we can plot it, right? So if you take all the, uh, if you consider all the samples, and if you only consider the first two futures, that is radius mean and texture mean, and we can plot all these features uh, as data points in a Cartesian coordinate system, and you can see that there are a region of futures, okay, let's say something like this, region. So we can assume that all the data points in this region belongs to malignant. Similarly, uh, so there are some, maybe something like this. all the data points in this region belongs to benign. And there are some regions where you can see some overlapping, uh, overlapping data points of malignant as well as benign, okay? So obviously a linear function is not going to uh, useful <clears throat> because you can see the boundary is nonlinear. I have drawn some nonlinear curves. But if linear means uh, I have to draw only straight lines like this, okay? So we, by looking at these data points, we are sure non, uh, no linear function is going to separate these data points. But if you make an attempt, if you want to come up with the best linear function, okay, what can I do? So I can, if I, if I stick to use linear function, uh, the the function is going to look like something like this, right? So W0, W1, W2, this is a straight line. 
So W0, W1, W2 are the parameters to be learned. So different values of W0, W1, W2 going to give a different uh, straight lines. Okay, so something like this. So various values for W0, W1, W2 generates different straight lines. And we can see that this particular straight line seems to be better than the rest. Okay, anyhow, uh, we are making this uh, decision visually, not with the help of any mathematical uh, algorithm. Okay, so anyhow, uh, we have to use some sort of uh, learning algorithm or some optimization techniques in order to find the best lines that separate these points. And uh, you need not to bother about that uh, for the time being, how to make that this all this. Now, the key takeaway from this is that uh, you should be uh, convenient with the notations used in the machine learning settings, and you should know wh what what do we mean by loss and what we mean by linear function, all these things. You need not to know about how part, okay? You simply ignore the how part. You just know all these things. And now, uh, again, I want to reinforce the concept with relevance to the same data set. So we have 569 samples. We are not going to use all of them for training alone. We divide this into training set and validation set and then testing set. So some percentage, say for example, 80% goes to training set and 20% of the training, okay, 20% of this 455 goes to validation set and 20% of the total goes to testing set, okay. So the, there is no strict rule on this 80-20. It depends on number of data points or number of samples available in the data set. But we usually split the entire data set into three like this training, validation and test. And one could even argue that since we are taking only two futures and it seems that they are not linearly separable. What if, if I add the third future? Can I add the third future instead of considering all the 30? If it uh, if I take only first three, uh, will it be linearly separable? Okay, so that is obvious question. So if you take three futures and if you try to visualize this, <coughs> we move from two dimensional to three-dimensional plot. That is the only difference going to be. So you can see here, right? Anyhow, if you, if you there are again some overlapping between uh, the malignant tumor and the benign tumor data points, okay? But there might be, of course, you, you can come up with some plane that separates these data points, but still there, there are some overlaps, okay? So if you use linear function, it simply get extended. So here you can take, uh, you can see that we are added this, we have added this term to the previous function, okay? So in the previous case, we considered the two futures, x1 and x2, where j is one, j is two. Here we are considering the third future as well and also giving some weightage to it. Now again, what is the best value for w0, w1, w2 and w3? That is to be learned by using some optimization algorithm okay so but in fact uh, we can go we can use all the 30 features why we limit it to two and three so we have discussed two and three uh, just to give some visual understanding if we uh, if you ask one more question can i add the uh, fourth future to it of course you can add the fourth future and you can consider all the 30 futures but it is difficult to visualize once if you go beyond a three dimension okay so that that's obvious okay so having discussed all these things and you may finally ask this question do i need all these 30 futures in order to make a good prediction okay but nowadays it doesn't matter 30 futures are very uh, less with the help of uh, with the availability of a lot of computational power these 30 futures even now nowadays we are dealing with millions of futures okay but the question you uh, this question is reasonable are there any way we can represent all these 30 futures in say for example all these 30 numbers with the help of the three numbers okay so with that we are moving to uh, the next one that is unsupervised learning okay and again you uh, pause this video uh, and then you just Try to contemplate all that that you that that are covered in in this particular video. Okay, and if you have any doubt, uh, you can get it cleared 
in relaxation.